Hey Rick, so happy to have you here today. Guard, it's great to be with you. Look at this. I know, a, you like this lineup, oh, don't you? I love this. is a big league lineup <laughs> right here where it still had Alley here at Hatback Bar and Grill, yeah. which is an amazing place right here before, during, and after ball games. Uh, very popular place, but this is absolutely I love incredible. It. You ready to dive in? I'm going to dive in, but I want to ask you this first. Yeah. Check out this these memories oh. back here on the wall. Oh, I mean, every picture is a memory. Guard, there's a million stories on this wall. Every picture, baseball gloves, has a story. There's my buddy Dave Henderson right oh, there. Yeah. We started our Toys for Kids charity 27 years ago. Remember we that? buy toys for homeless kids. You know, at, during the holiday season, and it was the first draft pick by the Mariners. Oh, absolutely! And then you got Griffey and Griffey up here. It's father oh, and son. It was one of the greatest, greatest sights I've ever seen in a Major League Baseball game. Father and son playing on the same team in a Major League game, big league uniforms in a big league stadium. Well hit the center field. Devon White going back, gone. A two-run home run. And then about a week later, we go to Anaheim, and Junior and senior go back to back. And he hits one well to left center field. Dante Bichette, back to back home run. <laughs> what a moment. And Junior comes in the dugout and said, he said, Pops, that's how you do it. Wow, so many memories. And, and, there, and there's something about the Mariners and, and the community. There is a, a special connection there, isn't there? Oh, there is, because baseball is every day. You get a chance, the fans get a chance to know these guys coming out to the ballpark or listening on the radio or watching on TV. It's every day. They become part of your family. The broadcasters do as well. Yeah. You know, Dave Niehaus was one of the most beloved broadcasters in the history of the game of baseball. Hall of Fame in 2008. The eyesight side of the home plate up by a great guy. The greatest thing that ever happened to me personally was, was Dave Niehaus. He, he taught me so many wonderful lessons because we had a lot of lean years in Seattle. Oh, I remember. It took us 15 years to have our first winning season. Oh, yeah. 1991. 1995 was the first year we went to the playoffs. And But during all that time, and I got here in 1983, fans here in the Northwest had Dave Niehaus. And he always told me, he says, Rick, it may not be a, a great game, but it doesn't have to be a, a bad broadcast. You could still have maybe a bad game. You could still make it a great broadcast by entertaining the fans. And that's what David did. And a fastball swung on at the deep center field. Bernie Williams goes back, and it is. Get out the right bread and the mustard this time, Grandma. It is a grand salami. And the Mariners lead it 10 to 6. I don't believe it. My, oh, my. You picked up the ball perfectly. Because oh, every, you. when you and people hear your voice, Rick, <laughs> it's Mariners. It's you. The 2 2 pitch to Edgar. Swing and a high ground ball, base hit in the right field. That's the joy of doing what we do as broadcasters, guard, is that, you know, we, we, if you're around for a long time, they get to know you. Now, I'll never forget my first broadcast in 1983. We finished up spring training, we come home, we play the New York Yankees. And uh, David's broadcasting the game, and I'm, he's doing the play by play, and I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm jumping in after every pitch. I'm talking like crazy, you know. I'm, <laughs> Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm going nuts. Oh, yeah. you know? You're amped and up. I'm amped up, man. I'm in the big <laughs> leagues. And after the first inning, he finally reached over and he turned off my mic. He said, you don't have to talk after every pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fired. I said, OK, all right. Thank you. And uh, but he taught me one amazing lesson after another. Yeah. And he was the best ever. He really was. And he was on spot on. 1995. Branding iron hot. The one two pitch. K inserted. It's over. Right over the heart of the plate. Randy looks to the skies. That is covered by the dome and bedlam as the Mariners now erupt. Well, you got to remember what that team did. That team in 1995 yeah, uh, saved baseball. If they didn't do what they did, when they did, and how they did it, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah. You and I would not be That's here exactly talking right. about the history of the Seattle Mariners because of what they did. They're going to wave him in. The throw to the plate will be late. The Mariners are going to play for the American League Championship. I don't believe it. It just continues. My, oh, my. And all this was happening at the Kingdom, too. What, what are your yeah. thoughts on the Kingdom? I, I oh. sort of still miss the Kingdom a little bit, I have yeah. to admit. That was our home. It, honestly, it wasn't the, obviously the greatest ballpark in America, but we made it 
our own because we won. Teams didn't want to play us. And I'll never forget when they imploded it. I remember. Dan Wilson and I were standing in the clubhouse down in Peoria at spring training. Fire. I looked at Danny, Danny looked at me, we were both kind of emotional because yeah. that was our home. All That's where we had that great success in 1995 that's, like I said, saved baseball mm -hmm. here in Seattle. <laughs> Let me, let me throw a curveball at you. Sure. You you have called more baseball games in the history of the Seattle Mariners, so you're definitely a Hall of Famer. What is your best call, your best play, your best memory with the Mariners? Wow. I, I'd have to go back to a, a call that I made, that call by Luis Soho. The throw to the plate, cut off, the relay by Langston, gets that by Allison, Doris scores. This year, we had a little bit of a drought, you know, not getting to the playoffs for a long time since 2001, 20-year drought. Cal Raleigh comes up, yeah, pinch hit, and works the count to three and two off of Domingo Acevedo of the Oakland A's. Our magic number is down to one. We win that game, Mariners win that game, Mariner fans go to the playoffs for the first time since 2001. Here's the stretch. The 3-2 pitch, swing and a drive. Deep to right field. Stay fair. Holy smokes, he did it. Off the hit in air cafe. It was a thrill to call that. I was just screaming. And I, I, I thought, thought I was about ready to jump out of the booth. But Cal Raleigh, thank you very much, Cal. Rick, let me ask you this. There are 30 teams in the Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. So you have to know everything about the Mariners and then yeah. everything about the other teams, too. H how do you prep for a game? And you got games coming like this daily. Yeah. I tell kids when I go to schools and talk to kids, I got homework. Yeah. You know, just like you, you have one, I have homework every day because I don't want to let the fans down. It starts at 7 o'clock in the morning for me when I get up and make a pot of coffee and I sit there at home with my cat Sparky, who I named after Sparky Anderson when I was with the Tigers <laughs> right. for three years. And uh, I, I prep for at least an hour and a half or two hours. So when I get out to the ballpark, I like to have time to get down on the field and talk to the players. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing for me is to tell stories. And the Kirby, oh, two pitch to Tappy on the way, swinging a fly ball center field, coming in Julio. He makes the catch and the ball game is over. The Mariners win the wild card series. They're going to Houston to take on the Astros. You're looking at a guy who's living his dream, a kid that grew up in the south side of Chicago, wanting to be a major league broadcaster ever since I was 12 years old. So I'm telling you, all you kids out there, find out what you're great at, find out what your passion is, and you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Rick, you've been in the game a long, long time. You've seen it morph. They're trying to speed the game up a little bit. Where do you see baseball right now in the future? Oh, God, baseball is in great shape, especially right across the street over here yeah. with this ball club. Uh, with one of the youngest teams in baseball last year, the Mariners made it to the playoffs for the first time, as everybody knows, in a long time. The biggest surprise last year, uh, the most amazing season I've seen in a long time was uh, Julio Rodriguez. There you go, left field. We got a tie ball game. Julio, oh baby, what a moment. Tie ball game at 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh you know, the American League Incredible. Rookie of the Year at the age of 21 last year, doing what he did and with the joy that he played the game with, always that smile on his face reminded me of another guy, yeah. you know, in 1989 when he broke in as a 19-year-old kid, Ken Griffey Jr. So the future is bright here, and the future is bright in Major League Baseball. Yeah. You've got so many great young players in the game of baseball right now that, uh, you know, they're going to be around for a long time, and the game of baseball is going to be great for a long, long time.